so now we have seen that the blood vessels the different type of blood vessels and their structure and functions and the discovery of their functioning by various scientists now let us see the functioning of human heart earlier we have seen the structure the internal structure of the human heart various parts of the human heart now let us see the functioning how the mechanism of blood flow is done by the heart so now we see that the heart human heart it's a very complicated organ and it has to beat that means it has to pump the blood to various body parts and it has to collect the blood from different body parts so the cycle sending and receiving the blood we call it as cardiac cycle so at what stage of our life this cardiac start a cycle starts or begins it starts at an age of 21st day of the embryonic development so when an embryo is developed at the 21st day the heart starts beating for the feet a small baby so that beating it will continue till the death of the person so it should work non stop the cardiac cycle the pumping of the blood should be a continuous process throughout the life so the heart is equipped in such a way to have that maximum efficiency of pumping the blood so that is called as cardiac cycle now let us see what are the various steps in the cardiac cycle here we see the structure of the heart has got four chambers two atria and two ventricles and we find different blood vessels arteries and veins connected to auricles that means atria at the same time to the ventricles now in the first step consider joint diastole diastole means contract uh, relaxation relaxing the chambers of the heart relaxing it is called as diastole we are calling it as joint diastole just imagine the joint diastole naturally the joint diastole will not happen because when once uh, or the artery are contracting the ventricles are relaxing so simultaneously it happens but just imagine that all the four chambers are relaxed we call it as joint diastole so where the joint diastole when the joint diastole takes place so you uh, see that blood it enters into the atria as well as ventricles the blood enters into the atria into this auricles from where does it comes the blood enters into the auricles from the veins superior vena cava and inferior vena cava this is the superior vena cava inferior vena cava these veins bring the deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body superior vena cava brings the blood from the head into this atria this is the left sorry right atria and the inferior vena cava it brings the blood from body parts so what is that blood deoxygenated blood so deoxygenated blood is brought to the right atrium it's filled now into the left atria the blood from lungs oxygenated blood from lungs is brought into left atrium so this is through the pulmonary veins pulmonary veins they bring the oxygenated blood here so initially the auricles are filled with blood right auricle is filled with deoxygenated blood which is sent down into the ventricle left auricle is filled with oxygenated blood which is sent down into the left ventricle so when these two atria the right atria is having deoxygenated blood from various parts left atria is having the oxygenated blood which come from lungs from the lungs through pulmonary veins it enters when this atria contract the blood flows to the ventricles right ventricle left ventricle right ventricle is full of deoxygenated blood left ventricle is full of oxygenated blood 
So now the ventricles start contracting, ventricular systole. So the ventricles are going to contract. When auricle contracted, the blood came down into ventricle. Now if ventricles contract, will the blood go back to atria? No, it will not go back because here the flow of blood is one way, allowed only in one way. Atria to ventricles, that's all, always the same. Atria to ventricles, not from ventricles to atria. Why not? Because the reverse flow is prevented by the valves. Here you can find some valves which prevent the reverse flow of blood. So from the ventricle, the blood cannot flow back to the atria. Then what happens to the blood? The blood is pumped into the other blood vessels. See what are they? Right ventricle, the right ventricle is having deoxygenated blood. So it pumps the deoxygenated blood into the pulmonary artery. This is the pulmonary artery. This pulmonary artery is branched into two. You can see one branch here, the other branch here. These two branches, they go to lungs. For what? For oxygenation. So the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle is carried to lungs through pulmonary artery, biggest artery we find here. So in such a way, when the ventricular systole, ventricles are contracted, the blood is pumped into the heart, uh, lungs through this pulmonary artery. Then how about the left ventricle? When the left ventricle is contracted, what is there in the left ventricle? Oxygenated blood. This oxygenated blood is pumped into the systemic aorta. Systemic aorta. So systemic aorta is a big artery which will supply the oxygenated blood to different parts of the body. So the left ventricle pumps into systemic aorta, right ventricle pumps into pulmonary artery. In this way, the blood is pumped to different parts by the ventricles. So here we observe the thing that when ventricles are contracted, the blood is not pumped back into the atria because of the valves. So when the heart beats, we hear a sound. If we go to a doctor, the doctor diagnoses the heartbeat. He observes the heartbeat, how the heart is beating. And uh, the heartbeat is observed by the sound that the heart makes. So they make a calculation how many times the heart is beating per minute of time. So from where does the sound come from? The heart. Which part makes the sound? At what position while what activity the sound is made? So we know that valves are the flap-like structures which control the flow of blood in direction, in a specific direction. So while the working of this, these flaps, the sound is made, the sound is produced. So generally we hear the sound as lub dub. So among these two sounds, lub dub, it comprises one heartbeat, but the sound lub is more higher, louder compared to a dull sound dub. The sound, the first sound, the lub, the higher sound is made when the ventricles, they contract ventricular systole while pumping the blood to different body parts. So when the blood is pumped to different body parts through the systemic aorta and pulmonary artery, then these valves, they close forcibly very fast. Just how you throw a door. If you throw a door very fast, the door it closes and makes a sound, big sound, bang. In the same way, yeah, these two doors, the flaps are immediately closed or shut, making a sound lump. So the valves, they close to prevent the entry of the blood into the atria from the ventricles in both the cases, left and right. So when the ventricles, uh, when the valves are suddenly closed, they make a sound lump. So after this, what happens? Now the blood, the atria contracts during the atri uh, atrial systole. While the atria contracts, the blood is passed into the ventricles. Now the valves are opened with a force. Then also they make a sound, but it is a bit low and a dull sound called as dub. So both the sounds are of not equal level. They are of higher and lower, the bigger sound, smaller sound, but both the sounds they comprise of heartbeat. And we have seen 
and um, how these sounds are made. So the total cycle is called as cardiac cycle, the contractions and relaxations. If you see that the total uh, cycle, it takes a time of 0 0.8 second. 0 0.8 second is the time to complete one cardiac cycle. And if you see that the contraction of uh, atria, it takes 0 0.11 to 0.14 seconds. This is for atrial systole contraction, whereas for the ventricular 0.27 to 0.35 for ventricular systole. ventricles contraction. So, this is the time required for the contraction of atria and ventricles. So, by this we understand one thing the blood is not continuously supplied. You see if you observe a water pipeline you might have seen a water motor which pumps the water into the pipeline. So, in your house you can see that the water is drawn, uh, drawn from the house or the sump which is in that uh, ground floor, from there the water is drawn into the tank. So, if you observe how the water is flowing in the pipeline, when the motor is on, the water it flows continuously, continuous flow. But if you see the circulatory system, here the heart is also like a motor and pumping it, but the flow is not continuous. The flow is like spurts, like jerks, which is called as pulse. It is throbbing. So, it is not continuous flow. It is stop and go, stop and go because of the contraction and relaxation. So, which we call it as pulse. You can observe your pulse, put your fingers on the wrist area and hold it for some time. You can feel that pulsation. So, that is called as the pulse.